Welcome to another edition of the Sledgehammer Fight Show. And on my left today, we have Australia's best known preacher. And of course, that's the one and only Bruce, the Preacher McPhee. Bruce, thanks very much for taking your time out today. Thanks for having me, Jerry. Yeah, it's a pretty big time for you at the moment, Bruce. You have your comeback fight in Australia on the Four Man Eliminator at the Rumble at the Ridge. How are you feeling for it? I'm looking forward to it, actually. I've um, been out for a little while, but um, I'm back with the bang, you know. Uh, the men you're fighting on the night, we've got some good fighters. We have the war horse, Grant Sullen. The Japanese buzzsaw, John Lee, and the youngest of the bunch, um, Damage Odin Daniels. He's also a very good fighter. Now these boys have got in their mind with the amount of injuries you've had of late. They're telling me that it's your last roll of the dice. I reckon you, you can come back and come back strongly. I'm not coming back uh, for any other reason than to win. And everyone will find out on the night I'm bringing my A game. And so if those boys don't bring theirs, it's going to be lights out for everyone. Yeah, that's fair enough too. They've all got different styles, like with Grant Sullen, he's got that swarming style where it's very hard to get set. Have you got any particular plans if you happen to draw Grant first up? Uh, Grant's tough. Um, I'm getting in there doing what I always do, and that's punching on. Uh, you've got John Lee, the Japanese buzzsaw. He's a left-handed fighter, and you've had an incredible amount of fights. And I'm sure you've fought left-handers um, plenty of times before. Would you fight a little bit differently if you happen to draw John first up? Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of people with left hands, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take no, exception to that. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, mate, I'm getting in there. I'm fighting everyone the same, actually. I'm getting in there and doing the job. And last and certainly not least, we have Odin Damage Daniels. Now, Odin's the youngest bloke in the field. All the other bulls are over 30. And without a doubt, Odin watched Toby Smith the other week, and he's got to have it in the back of his mind that he's going to do the same thing to you three. What do you think is going to happen? Odin Daniels no Toby Smith, that's for sure. What would you rate as your best moment, your best ever win? Uh, I'd have to say Ben John Wayne third time and not just because it was John Wayne but because he'd already rolled me twice yeah, so that, it meant a lot to beat him the third time because um, he smacked me two times. Would John be your toughest opponent or or have you got other people that you've had harder fights with? Um, John Wayne's uh, John Wayne Pye is tough as fuck <laughs> um, as far as the toughest guy you know every fight's tough you know I don't get into any fight I've never gone into any fight thinking it was going to be easy and certainly none of them are. He's getting all set up for this fight on the ninth. It's a big occasion. Um, he's got to get going because he's actually got to go to training straight after this. So, Bruce, once again, good luck on the ninth. I hope you're going to go really well. And thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you very much, Jim. Ladies and gentlemen, here I am with one man who's got to be one of the happiest men in Australia. It's Mr. Steve Jello, the owner and the trainer at the Forty Chief Boxing Gym. Steve, thanks for coming on the show today. Jim, thanks for having us, mate. It's a uh, pleasure. Yeah. It's great, mate. Big times are happening for you. You're taking Jared Fletcher to New York for the world title. Jared tells me he's been training hard. You happy with his progress so far? Yeah, his preparation gym's been excellent. He's uh, in a really good place in his boxing career at the moment. Uh, we had a great hit out with Daniel Gill on Monday here. Now, Steve, you've been training guys for a long time. You've been established here for how many years at this particular uh, venue? We've been at this gym now probably six years. We've got more champions than anyone else in Australia. Um, and a good, good bunch of guys with their feet on their ground and uh, just get on with what they're doing, yeah. yeah. Actually, as recently as Sunday night, you claimed a new champion with the WBA Super Middleweight Champion. Yeah, Dennis Hogan, he, he won that, and uh, he's here now. Look, Dennis, come on over. You know, he's uh, oh, our well, Irish import, Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, how are you, mate? Yeah, Thanks a lot. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here's yeah, a bit of a lucky break for us. We've got Dennis Hogan. Dennis, you've just come back from a 12-round win over Steve Moxon in Melbourne. Yep. Yeah, got a good, tough fight with Steve, but... Um, I stuck to the game plan and I boxed Steve with a lot of power, but um, just boxed my way through it and I felt like I had a comfortable win, yeah. It's going pretty well for you. Uh, for my records, you're 20 and over at the moment? That's right, 20 fights undefeated, yeah. Jesus, that's a good start to the career. A few of the boys are getting world title shots, I suppose in time that's got to be an option for you as well. Man, I can't wait, you know, it's been the goal to um, have, uh, have, have, have the state title, have the national title, continental title and then a world title. So now I'm three quarters of the way there now and I'm looking for the big one, so. Actually, it's good because you've worked your way up through the ranks like a lot of guys, especially the Americans, build their records up and go for these titles, but you've actually won all the regional titles here in Australia after coming back, coming over from Ireland. That's right, yeah. So, uh, as I say, you're cl cleaning up your yard and I feel I've done that pretty well. Anyone who, who wanted, who called me out or, or um, I've worked my way up and I've given them the opportunity and now I think we're set to go international. So That's going to be fantastic. Now ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'd like to thank Dennis and Steve for appearing on the show. It's been really great having you guys on. And just for the people who don't know, Steve actually lets us use his gym for all our boxing technique workouts. And as a matter of fact, speaking of that, we're going to that right now with the lovely Natalia.
Ladies and gentlemen, we've had a great show so far. And once again, for Technique Workshop, we're at the Fortitude Gym, yeah. run by Steve Jella um, on Cabarra Street, just behind the Waterloo Hotel. It's the training place of champions. And once again, this week, we're lucky enough to have the Rated R superstar, Natalia Robinson, with us. And here she is. Thanks, Natalia, for taking your time out again today. Now, what we're going to work on today is the idea of trapping your opponents in the corner and punishing them. I'll demonstrate the techniques first once again and explain them. Then we're going to give Natalia another chance to beat the crap out of me today. What we're going to work on is using a few hand combinations, using a body rip hook afterwards, and then finishing off with the knee. It's, um, it's a six technique combination, but it's very effective and a lot simpler than what it's going to look. Okay, what was happening? I've managed to get Natalia in the corner. So I'm using that double jab, trying to set up my right hand. I've done that. Now, when I throw my double jab, you will notice my right hand is firmly on my chin. Okay, the reason for that is, one, you're protected, because if my, if my hands are down, Natalia's going to hit me with a left hook or a jab. Sure as God made little green apples, that's going to happen. Okay, now the best thing is, the punch travels a short distance. The big, big, wide, big wide round arm punches don't work. The short ones that go maybe nine inches to a foot, they're the ones that do the damage. So I'm throwing that double jab, bang, that right hand comes in. Okay, Natalia's put her hands up to protect herself, leaving a nice open rib cage for Jimmy's delight. In goes the body rip. Once you hit the body rip, we're gonna go for the left hook now. When we throw this left hook, we're not just throwing a left hook like that. What I always do, and how I teach my students to fight, is I reload the hip. So I pull that hip back, and as I do that, my left hand comes straight back to my chin. There's your left hook. Okay, you land the left hook, you grab, boom, there's your knee straight to the rib cage. You're going to notice when I grab two, I'm not just holding your shoulders, because Natalia is, is clever enough to slip her arms on the inside of mine, and all of a sudden, she's, con she's controlling the grapple and I can't knee. Okay, that's a very important fact for you people to learn. So we'll go through it slowly once again. There's your double jab, you come in. There's a short right hand. Natalia brings her hands out to protect herself. Whoosh, there goes that. Rip to the body, straight into the floating rib cage. You reload the hook, when you do that, you just pull your hip back and your hand up high. There's your left hook. As soon as you do that, you grab and you get on the inside of Natalia's arms. There's your knee to the rib cage. Okay, now if you're lucky, you're gonna break a rib. At the very worst, you can win your opponent and you can get a standing eight count, which makes them an automatic 10, eight round your way. So if you haven't stopped them, you're in front on points. So we're gonna lead in with the double jab. She comes in, there's that right hand, rip, hook. Push, there's that knee, and that is a good knee, don't worry about that. It's just like I've got a wall of relaxed muscle here, otherwise I could be in a lot of trouble. Okay, we'll have another go at this. As you can see, Natalia is a great kneer, and she, with her experience in the fighting ring, she has no problem putting five and six punches together with a knee on the end. Now, it's a lot harder to do than what Natalia made it look, okay? But it's like my American viewers can tell you, a horse will not win the Kentucky Derby its first race. You have to build up to it. Natalia was in the same boat where she could only throw one or two punches. Now she puts six, eight, ten together. No problem at all. And Natalia, thanks for taking your time out again today. Great job. My ribs are a bit sore, eh? And ladies and gentlemen, joining me on my left is world title aspirant, Jared Left Jab Fletcher. Jared, you're off to New York on August the 9th to go fight for the world middleweight title. How are you feeling for it? Mate, really good, Jimmy. Um, mate, everything's going really well at the moment, so I've still got four weeks to go till the fight. So, mate, the most important thing is that I uh, put it together on the night. So, things are going well at the moment, and, um, mate, we're just looking forward to the opportunity. Well, Jared, you know, you had a massive amateur career, twice in the Commonwealth Games, Olympian. In some ways, this works in your favour because you're used to fighting overseas. It's not like you fought in Australia all your life and this is your first overseas adventure. Yeah, that's right. I, I spent seven years at the AOS in Canberra. So, uh, you know, for those seven years, we, we travelled the world and fought throughout the world. Uh, so, mate, I, I'm used to, used to fighting abroad and um, it's, it's, it's nothing new to me. So, you know, it's a totally different game being, being in the professionals. But, uh, you know, this is... This is a big opportunity for me and I'm just really looking forward to it. So, like I said, everything's going well at the moment and uh, I'll be ready come August 9th. You've been established here in the Valley for quite a few years now. You've actually fought in this very gym yeah. as well. Um, you find just being in the one place is a lot better for you rather than having to travel? Oh, I love it here. You know, this, this gym, it's, um, I, I help, helped work on it before we opened it up and that. So this, this is home to me and um, 
mate, it's good. I've got a really good team around me. My coach Steve Dell is like a father figure, and um, all the yeah. boys in the gym, it, it's fantastic. So everything's going well. I've got a great team around me, and um, yeah, I couldn't couldn't ask for anything more at the moment. And one thing which can affect um, fighters sometimes, you'll be going into the American summer. Even though we've had a, a cold winter in, in Australia, we're used to the hot weather, and that's not going to bother you too much either, I don't think. No, nah, not at all, mate. I, I love the heat, and uh, we, we, we train in an old tin shed here, so uh, that's right. it's 40 degrees on a lot of days when we're training in here, so that's something I'm used to, and it's not going to affect me at all. Oh, that's great. Well, Jared's training, he's um, giving me the wave in the background. He's got to go do some bag work and some sparring later. If we're lucky, we might get some footage of him. But, Jared, good luck on the 9th. We'll all be watching and supporting you from Australia. Yeah. And thanks a lot for taking your time to appear on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Jimmy. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting close. Well, it's been an amazing episode of the show. We've just got so much going on in the Australian fight game at the moment. We've had the big fights with Toby Smith's massive win over John Wayne Parr. Toby really came of age in the night. John Wayne fought like the warrior he was. Toby was just brilliant the way he fought, and he's a young man destined for big things. Tomahawk Thompson went all the way to Las Vegas in the USA to fight Kevin Ross. Tomahawk went the five rounds, caught a knee that you would not believe in the fifth round, stayed on his feet and kept going. Kevin and uh, Michael were both brilliant on the night, and Michael's really done his country proud. As well as Jared left Jab Fletcher going all the way to New York to fight on August the 9th for the world title. My name is Jimmy Shannon and you've just watched the Sledgehammer Fight Show.